So let me show you how you can use BigQuery inside of N8N. And as an example, I will show you how you can export your data from your Google Search Console into a BigQuery table and then use the BigQuery node inside of N8N to execute any query. So the first step is to activate your bulk export. I have already done this. You can do this by going to settings and then click on bulk export. And as you can see, I already selected a project, set a data set name and also a location for the data set. And if I have not done it before, then it will look like this. So it's really easy. The only thing you have to do is to set up a Google Cloud project, take this project and use it here, take a data set name and also a location. And then you have to wait up to 48 hours till the first export will start. So that means if you have not done it before, I would suggest to create a bulk export and maybe come two days later back to this video. And then you should be able to follow along each step. Once your bulk export connection is working, the next step is to enable the API in the Google Cloud. The easiest is just to search here for BigQuery, and then you should be able to see this one, BigQuery API, and most likely it's not activated. So you have to activate it in order to use BigQuery. And unfortunately, it's not the only thing we have to do. There are a few things more. So the next step is to go to the Google Cloud Console. And then you have to go to Identity and Access Management. So most likely it's already here. If you don't have it here, you can also search for it. And then you will notice that there's also another entry which starts with Search Console Data Export. And in order to be able to query data, we have to assign two different roles. The first one is BigQuery Data Editor, and the other one is BigQuery Job User. You can simply do it by clicking here on the Edit icon. And let's say I want to add another role because as you can see, I have already done this. You can just click on Add Roles, and then you can search here inside of this drop down. So these are the things you have to do in order to be able to query data. But what we are right now missing is still the credential. So as you can see, I have already set it up and it's also really easy. So in case you have worked with Google Sheets or any other API from Google, then you can use the same client ID and client secret. So in this case, you need your redirect URL, client ID, and client secret. If you already know where to find it, then you can skip the next few seconds. But if you don't know it, then I can also quickly show it where you can find it. So we need to go back to the Google Cloud Console, and then we have to click on the navigation menu, and then we need to click on APIs and services. And here you can see that you have also sign-in data, and then you will be able to see your credentials, which you have set before. If you have no credentials yet, then you can just click on create one and then click on OAuth client ID. As a type, you have to select a web application. You can set a name and here you have to set up your URI. So the redirect URL, which you saw before. So let's say if you're working with your local host, then it would be, for instance, this one. If you're using any other provider, then of course this URL might change. Once you have done this, so I will skip that because I have it already, then you will be able to select the client and on the right side, I have blurred it because it's sensitive data and I would also suggest to never show it to anyone. And then you have the client ID and also the client secret. So these two values are the ones which you need here and here. So let's say everything is set up and it works. Now you need to know where you can find the BigQuery tables because they have like kind of a specific name and they usually start with Search Console, and if you set something like a suffix, maybe a website name or similar, then you have it also here inside the table name. And there's also always a table for search data URL impression and also search data site impression. And in case you want to be 100% sure, then you can go to Google Cloud Console again. And this time we have to go to BigQuery, and then you will be able to see here your project, and you have to open it and on the bottom, you will be able to see your bulk exports. If you have set up multiple bulk exports, then you will see all of them here. So for this example, I took one of my websites, Marvomatic, and as you can see here, we do have two tables. We'll make it a little bit bigger. So search data site impression and also search data URL impression. And the easiest thing is to get the table name just to create a simple query because then you will be able to see inside the from keyword, the exact name. So click on the three dots, then queries. And as you can see here, we have the query. And the most important thing for you is the part after your project name. You don't have to add the project name because the big query node will take care of it. As you can see here, you can select the project and then you just need 
the prefix for your search console table and the table that you want to query so in case you want to have data for every page then it would be search data url impression if we want to have some metrics about your website in general then it would be search data site impression before I will show you a few examples, we need to check the pricing. So the bulk export itself is free of charge, so you don't have to pay for it. That's also the reason why I would suggest whenever you create a new website, the first thing you should do is activate the bulk export. So that means when data is transferred from your Google Search Console into the BigQuery table, you don't have to pay for it, but you have to pay for the queries you are going to execute, and you will find a detailed explanation of the pricing under BigQuery pricing. I will also put the link into the description. And the good thing is that they also have a free tier. So for instance, the first terabyte per month is free. And if you execute a lot or you have like a website with a lot of data, then it might be possible that you need more than that. And then you have to pay for every terabyte of data you will use. There are also some tricks on how to improve the performance or let's say how to improve your query so that you don't execute or let's say get more data than you need, which will also cause more costs. And the documentation of Google Search Central is quite good. I will also put the link into the description. So there are like some basic things you can do in order to avoid some, let's say, stupid mistakes. For example, querying like select all without a limit or something. And let's say you're collecting data for the last 10 months and then you query all the data, that might be quite expensive. So I would definitely encourage you to check out the documentation in order to avoid some unnecessary costs. So let's have a look into two examples. And the first example is to get data for every page. So then we would use the table search data URL impression. And as you can see, I already did a mistake. I didn't set a limit and I also didn't set any where statements. So in my case, it's not really important because I have a new website. Uh, there is not a lot of data, but let's say you have a lot of data because you have a website with a lot of traffic or historical data, then you would always set for testing a limit. Let's say I want only 10 items and I could also set here limit, or you could also filter it more down by using where statements. So let's say I only want to have data where this is equal to false. Then I would just copy the name, set it to false. And if we query it now, so let's do it first without the limits that we can see that's less data. So you can see only 315 before we had like 550 or so. And if you test your queries, then I would suggest use always a limit because otherwise your testing can be really expensive. So just set here, limit 10, and then we get only 10 rows. And if we have a look into the properties of our table, then we can see we have the date, the site URL, then also the URL, which is actually the page. We have the query, country, search type, device. And if we go down, we have also impressions, clicks, and the position for the current day. So in this case, I was ranking for the query Marvelmatic with my page Automatic, so this is my landing page on this date on position zero, so on the first page of Google as a first result. If you want to analyze on the site level, then you could use the other table, which is search data site impression. I already set the filter here, and when we execute it, then we can see that we are not able to check which page was ranking for which keyword and also how many clicks, impressions and so on we had on this date. Here we can only check the performance based on the site URL and other properties like country, search type, device, and so on. So this table would be good if you want to check the general health of your website. But if you want to drill down and also check how are, for instance, your landing pages, performing reviews, listicles, or whatever you are doing with your website, then I would always suggest to use this table because you can analyze the data better and also build on top of that your own analysis. So let's have a look into two templates where I'm using the BigQuery node to analyze the performance of my websites. So the first template is really simple. It just tracks the keyword position. So it's basically a keyword rank tracking tool, except that you don't have to pay a lot for it. As I said, you need to pay for the queries that you're going to execute. But in this case, you have the opportunity to track as many keywords as you want to for as many websites. And the best part is that it's at least as accurate as the uh, other rank trackers, because most of them are just using data from your Google Search Console. And as you can see here, it's really simple. We can set up some domains, and then we have the keyword tracking by a list of keywords. And the data comes also from BigQuery. So 
this query is a little bit more complex, but what it does is quite simple. It takes a list of keywords and then it checks the position for the given date. And then you will have a table with the keyword date, which device country, and of course the position in Google at the given date. This template is completely for free. And I will also put the link into the description so you can just download it and feel free to use it. And there's also another template which I'm using on a regular basis. And it also takes data from our big query tables. And in a nutshell, what I'm doing here is I create a performance sheet and then I analyze the performance of my pages as well as for my keywords based on two periods. So for instance, I can set a number like 14 and then I compare the last 14 days with the 14 days prior to that. So that allows me to quickly identify if the page is losing traffic or not, and also for keywords. And of course, you can also do it with other tools. But the disadvantage is that most of them are quite expensive. And for instance, if you self-host N8N, set up the bike export, then you can do it with just a few cents or even completely for free. In case you're also interested in other templates to automate your SEO work, then feel free to check out my website. I have already quite a few free templates that will help you to optimize existing articles, set up rank tracking, automate the ZERP analysis, and even more. And in case you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments and I will answer as soon as possible. And then see you in the next video.